Okay, today we're going to talk about the window open method. So this is how you can create brand new tabs, brand new windows, or open things in iframes. And then after you've opened them, you can actually use JavaScript to control them. As long as they belong to the same domain as whatever your website is, you have full control over the page that you've opened with the opening page. So I've got a simple page here, five buttons. I'm going to show a bunch of different things that we can do with window open. Uh, this is an iframe here with the red border around it. And these five buttons all have click events. So let's take a quick look in here. Each of the buttons we can see has a different ID. And here's my iframe. Now I've got an ID and a name on this iframe. The reason for that is ID is great for targeting something with JavaScript or CSS. But if you're going to use the window open method, you need to know what the name of the thing is that you're going to be controlling or feeding a source to. In this case, the name is my frame. It can be anything you want, but my frame is going to be the name of this iframe where I'm sending pages to to be displayed. The source, my default here, is allow blank, or about blank rather. And about blank means don't show anything. It's okay, it's an empty iframe, and it's allowed to be empty. This is what we use to represent the fact that it's empty. We could, if we wanted, I've got a couple of other pages here, two and three, so one, two, and three are my pages. They just have some basic content in there that I can see that they are being loaded. So we could change this. I copy that and paste it inside of here. Save that, come back. And we can see there's page three has actually been loaded inside the iframe. I come back and undo that. There we are, we're back to the blank one. Okay, so opening Google in a new tab. So let's talk about tabs versus windows. Now, you can click the plus sign in your browser, or depending on what your browser is, the control to open the next tab. There's keyboard shortcuts to open a new tab. When you click on a link, so if I have an anchor tag that I put in my page, and whatever that is. So here, if you set the target for that link equal to underscore blank, you are telling the browser that you want to open up a brand new tab and open that page in the new tab. So I click here, there it is, the new tab is opened up. And it's up to the browser entirely whether this is a new tab or a new window. So the default now, because of mobile browsing, is tabs. Uh, mobile devices, your phone doesn't have new windows it opens up, it always does things as tabs. So that is the default behavior now. But with window.open, we can control that a little bit. So let's come down here and load the first one, the Google one. So we're going to click on the button and we want to open this URL in a new tab or in a new window using the window open method. So we'll say let other because this method is going to return to us actually a reference to whatever it is that we open. This is the variable that we can then use to target that new tab or new window to control it as long as it's the same domain. We won't be able to do anything with Google simply because I'm on localhost and Google is its own domain so I will not be able to script anything on there but I can open it. So we say URL then the name I can leave this empty it'll automatically open up a new tab, or I can say same thing I did in the link. This is the name of the place where I want to load it, underscore blank. That's going to be the new tab. These are the features right here, and I'm just going to remove a couple off the end. Put this back to all yeses. So this is the default state. When you open up a new tab, it's got a menu bar, it's got location, it's resizable, it's got scroll bars, the status information at the bottom. Those all exist when you open up a new tab by default. And the final option here is the features. So if I do this, I'm going to get a brand new tab in the browser with Google in it. So let's try that out. There we go, there's Google, it's opened, it's in a new tab. I can't do anything with script with it, but I've opened it in a new tab. So window.open will allow me to do that. What about a new window though? What if I don't want it in a tab? I want to actually have a separate one. Well, that's where these are become important. If you vary from the default state, 
and I say, you know what? I'm going to say no to the status bar or no to the resizable, something like that. As soon as I change this from the default state, the browser is going to say, okay, well, I can't really have two tabs in the same window that are doing different things, so I need to open up a new tab. Now, with these features being loaded in, two of them being different, when I click on this, I have a brand new window open. This is actually a brand new window. And if I put in those other things, we can actually add height and width into here and control this so that when I click on here, there we go. There's my 400 by 400 window opened. Okay, so that's new tabs and windows. Current tab, well, this is really the same thing as doing an anchor tag and you're clicking on the anchor and you're loading it into the page, but you can do this as well. You can say window.open. This is the URL that I'm going to open. Instead of blank, we say self. And I don't have to put in the features. It'll be the default, which was all those yeses. There we go. I've replaced the current page with Google. So same thing as the anchor. I'm going to go back. We'll just uh, trim these off here. I'll leave them in here. If you look down in the description, you'll see that there is a link to the code gist that has the code for this page and the other two pages as well. So if you load them in the same folder, you'll be able to do the same experiments that we're doing here. Okay, so self works great. Now moving on to opening a local page in a new tab. Same sort of thing, but here we are actually going to be able to control it using script. So we'll say window.open, same as we did before. Here's the URL. Where do we want to load it? Well, if it's a new tab, let's just do the standard underscore blank. And then we can say features, but if we're not making any changes to them, we don't have to put them there. It'll just be the default. All right, so we click on open local page. There it is, page two did open. But what I want to do is once I've opened this new page, I want to be able to control it with script. So, so we're going to target with other, that is the other window object. And it's the same as writing window here on a current page. Inside of there, we have the document object. And inside that, there's the body. We can change the background color in the style. And I'll just use cornflower blue. That seems to be my go-to color in a lot of tutorials. But there we are. So this is the window that we just opened. Window represents the current page. Other represents the window that we've just opened. So that's the reference that we get back from this. So we have this thing targeted, but there's one problem that we have here, and that is the fact that this is going to take a moment for this to open and the reference to come back. If I try and target it here at the line right after, that other window will not be open yet. So we need to give a bit of a delay. So we'll do a set timeout here, and I'll put this all inside of a function that I will run after, let's say, one second. And then we'll just put our one line of code inside of here. There we go. So after one second, we're going to run this code to style that window that we're opening. Click on our button. And there it is. So after it's opened for that briefest of moments, then we can use the target to actually do something with our script and control the page. Okay, so in the iframe, same idea. Let's open up that page number three inside of here. We're going to do the same command and we're going to do a set timeout because we have to give it time for that other window to have opened. The time doesn't really matter that much as long as there is enough of a delay for the page 
to be created and opened in the browser. So inside of here, um, what are we doing? We're doing number three. Is there anything in three we can target? Let's um, let's give this an ID. We'll call it head. So we're going to change the text inside of here on number three. Let's do that. So we have other. That's our window. Document. And then we could do query selector or get element by ID. Get the one called head. And then I'm going to change the text content to be the new heading. There we go. All right, so this is going to be in the iframe. We're going to open up page three and change the heading text. Oh, sorry. We have it set up still as blank. It is the same command, window open, but we need to target the iframe. And that, if you remember, is with the name. So we come up here. My frame was the name here. So that is what we are using here in the open command. There's three, and then the heading gets changed after that amount of time. Okay, and random background color. So even if it's a blank page, like here, we've got about blank when it loads, we can still target that. And a couple of ways we can do it. One is you target the iframe, and then with the iframe, there is a property called content document. There's another one called content window. And you can probably guess what those represent. This is the window object inside the iframe. This is the document object inside of there. So this we could add on document. And we're talking about the same thing as content document now. So we could say body.style.backgroundcolor. And it's going to be our random color. I've already got the code here to generate a random hex value. And here this. These two lines are doing the exact same thing. It is the exact same script for both of those. And as long as I do something on the page to run the script, now I've set a value in that variable other. Right here, this variable other now points to whatever it is we're targeting. So I got to do something in the iframe. Yeah, let's open that in the iframe. Other is now pointing to here. We now set random background color if we're using other. And here we're just using the fr by the iframe. There we go. So even on the about blank, we are controlling the script here. All right, so I hope that helps you understand what you can do with iframes and new tabs and new windows with the window open method and all of those possible features. And I've got a link right here to a list of all the features so you can play around with that as well. All right, hope that helps you out. And as always, thanks for watching.